Things like holding our breath. Kate Winslet held her breath for seven minutes. Avatar 2 The Way of Water is finally here. The next installment of this epic story was an epic challenge to make for everyone involved. Stick around for all the goods. Number one, we knew it was coming. It's called the way of water, you know, you're gonna get wet. You might be hard pressed to put it better than these words from actor Sam Worthington. Sam wasn't sure what he was getting into when he was asked to be a part of the film, but he knew it would be challenging and he knew there was going to be a lot of work in the water. He wasn't wrong. Worthington explained that doing all of that acting while holding his breath underwater was brutal. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. You're dealing with the restrictions of free diving, the constraints of motion capture you're underwater and you're trying to keep an emotional journey going while you're innately struggling with the fear of dying. Number two, what took them so long? It's been a while since the release of the first Avatar film, and there was always a plan for a sequel, so what was the holdup? To put it simply, Avatar 2 took forever because James Cameron had to make sure Avatar 4 was ready to shoot. Not something you hear very often, right? Avatar 2 producer John Landau said that we did not have to hold here for technology. I think the first Avatar proved to us that we could be the impetus to push technology to where we needed it to go. Landau clarified that the delays happened because the filmmaking team was determined to get the scripts for all four planned Avatar sequels written and finalized before shooting for Avatar 2 even started. Landau said, We felt that this project was about getting the story right. You would never build a house until you had the blueprint to build from. The scripts are that blueprint, so we wanted to wait till all four of those were there. Number 3. Avatar 2 is already a record breaker, and not in the ways you might think. The Way of Water takes us below the surface of Pandora for quite a long time, and this fantastical journey takes on a new level of realism when you realize the actors are usually performing underwater and holding their breath for some record-setting times. According to one of the film's freediving instructors, Kate Winslet has a beastly 7-minute, 15-second breath hold, which is impressive. This broke a previous actor's record set by Tom Cruise during his 6-minute underwater sequence for Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Number Number 4. We want it, we don't want it, we want it. Director James Cameron struggled with cutting things out of the film and with tension around the final duration of the movie. Sam Worthington describes the film as 2 hours and 76 minutes long, and however you count it, you might say that's on the lengthy side. Director James Cameron recalled, I think there was a lot of tension around the length because it's a complicated linear narrative, which is the worst case scenario to try to cut short. One of the hardest parts of trying to shorten a movie is keeping things that don't advance the plot but are beautiful, scary, or suspenseful on their own. Cameron explained, We could take things out, and then if I felt the rhythm wasn't right, we could put things back in place. Number 5. No, it's not an evil genius secret weapon. Underwater cameras normally have a hard time capturing images with the quality we would expect from a big budget Hollywood style film. For Avatar 2 The Way of Water, a special camera system needed to be invented. This was because so much of the film takes place underwater, and because the actors would actually be performing underwater. You might think it sounds like a device from the world of Avatar, but this special camera is called the Deep X Beam Splitting Rig. Even with this special camera system, using lens is designed specifically for filming underwater, the production had an additional problem. There were bubbles forming on the lenses. Number 6. No bubbles, please. Avatar 2 actor Kate Winslet explained that the underwater motion capture process was extra difficult for both the motion capture system as well as the actors, because the actors were not allowed to breathe out. Kate explains, And you have a helmet with a helmet cam that's that can see every single movement and muscle and twitch and flicker on your face. She added, You're holding your breath, you can't release your bubbles, otherwise it's just a bubbly old mess and the camera doesn't see anything. Which would mean having to redo the take, which is a little more complicated than usual when you are 20 feet underwater. It was, yeah, a lot to learn. Number 7. How do you not look like a blowfish? Looking back, Sam Worthington expressed some of the actors' concerns when they were approaching the challenge of filming so many underwater scenes for Avatar 2 The Way of Water. The challenge was not necessarily holding their breath underwater for so long, but getting any effective acting done while doing so. Action. That's, you know, this Jim's wheelhouse. It's how do you do emotion underwater? How do you look at each other with such love when you're, you know, 20 
feet under the water. Number 8. These actors got all trained up. While Avatar 2 might have seen very long delays in production, sometimes an undertaking as big as making these movies just takes a long time. Part of the long preparation was the extensive training the actors had to go through before they could safely or even effectively begin shooting the story. Actor Zoe Saldana said, He had us working with like world-renowned free divers for weeks on end. The actress added, We were holding our breaths and really getting our bodies acclimated to the water and to the kind of depth that we were going to be shooting in. It turned out the training wasn't only effective and allowed for the magic of the story to come to life, but provided some pleasant surprises for the cast as well. We managed to break records even for ourselves that we never thought we would do. Number 9. These two go way back. Avatar 2 director James Cameron has worked with Kate Winslet before. Cameron directed Winslet in the film Titanic, and Kate has spoken publicly about her struggles with James and the harsh shooting conditions. Speaking about her experience on the epic movie, Winslet called Cameron a really tough nut to crack, adding, There were times I was genuinely frightened of him. Kate has also said, He has a temper like you wouldn't believe. You'd have to pay me a lot of money to work with Jim again. So it may have been a surprise to hear that she was working with him again on Avatar 2. James suggested that Winslet was willing to work with him again because she had something to prove to herself. Number 10. Mirror, mirror on the ceiling? Avatar 2 The Way of Water uses a motion capture system to capture the physical performances of the actors and bring their animated characters to life. This motion capture system relies on many cameras, being able to see the actors and track the movements of small markers worn on the actors' bodies and faces. One of the challenges of working underwater with this is that the surface of the water, when viewed from both above and below, forms a moving mirror. Director James Cameron explains that moving mirror reflects all the dots and markers, and it creates a bunch of false markers. It's a little bit like a fighter plane dumping a bunch of chaff to confuse the radar system of a missile. To address this problem, the team discovered that they could pour thousands of plastic balls into the pool to cover the surface of the water, without preventing the actors or the crew from being able to surface when and if they needed to. Can you imagine shooting a movie underwater, interacting with CGI, and then just doing it all over again right after? We'd hope you'd understand because you are in Avatar The Way of Water. If not, just let the cast and crew explain a little of the magic behind the madness that was this epic adventure. This is not a squad, it is a family. Avatar 2 did need to work hand in hand with CGI for the film to work, but it relied a lot more on the acting, specifically with facial expressions. Each actor was rigged up with a camera that pointed at their face close up, just to make sure not even an eyebrow twitch was left out in post. Those dots around their mouths and eyes are just little bits of marker to allow the CGI to pick up on the even finer and more subtle expressions. The actor creates the emotion, the actor creates the moment. James Cameron thought of everything when building the sets. He didn't just leave it up to the digital artists. He and his team created platforms in sound stages to emulate the scenes they were moving in. And because working on CGI when combined with real actors can be rather difficult to get accurately, he built small pieces of the digital scene that the actors would bump into. But more on that one a little later. Kate said she had a tough time getting used to interacting with digital monsters. She reminisces on a little mishap on set when she accidentally stabbed incorrectly at a fake monster. That's quite tricky because you think you're gonna ram it into somebody who wasn't even there. It took her a few times to finally get it right, and this embarrassing moment just broke her into the world of Pandora. We can't judge Sam, as the language of the Navi is quite difficult to get a grasp on. I'd have to learn them rope. <laughs> you have to write them on boards for me. But apparently, since the first Avatar movie, Worthington has needed crew members to hold up big cue cards for his scene speaking in the language. This is quite funny considering he does remember one particular word. Werewick or Alibu. I have no idea. Is there anyone I could remember? <laughs> we just still can't wrap our minds around the thought of the underwater cue cards, though. James Cameron instructed his actors to say their lines underwater, but to make sure not to blow bubbles because this could mess up the CGI. This seemed like a good plan to the rest of the cast, but poor Kate Winslet just couldn't get a grasp on it. She was so terrified of choking on the water that she struggled a bit with that request. It could have been a branch, tree, or spear. James just picked each one out carefully when filming the scenes. 
We don't build the coral. We build that which they need to touch. Not only to make the CGI feel more fluid, but to also give the actors something tangible on a non-existent set. That's also why a lot of the weapons you see the actors holding behind the scenes were more real, since it would be more difficult to just CGI those. You spend so much time underwater, it might be a little difficult to get back on land. That was the case for Jack Champion, who almost took a slip for the worst while filming this land scene. So the amount of times I actually slipped and like slammed my hip on the thing, like, you know, that that's really hard. The fact that the only close call for Jack was on land really says a lot about the skill of this cast. A couple years after the premiere of Avatar, James and his team began brewing a five-movie plan. They had already finished the scripts for the next three films before they even filmed two, giving them a clear outline of the franchise. By combining the filming of two and three, and even some of four, they were able to give the actors some time off before jumping into full gear in the next set of films. VFX supervisor Joe Leitieri spoke about filming so many at once, and how to deal with the chaos, saying, Story-wise, there was some overlap with the sets that needed to be built, but we were going to focus on three first. Stephen Lang struggled a lot to get past his naturally kind personality to play the colonel, that he kind of starved himself every morning. Some of us can agree that this is a great way to put someone in a bad mood, but it doesn't end there for his preparation. He also likes to work out for long periods of time and look at himself in the mirror. I get in front of the mirror, have a good look at myself, preen for a little while. Remember when Disney acquired 21st Century Fox? Well, that happened while James was getting a three hour Avatar 2 picture in the can. This caused quite a bit of ruckus with the new company, but he was able to convince the team it was justified. The way he put it, because it's a complicated linear narrative, which is the worst scenario for trying to shorten, you've got a complex story servicing a lot of characters, and it's like dominoes falling. This has to happen for that to happen. You're not following a bunch of parallel plot lines in a way that you could take a lot out. Kate Winslet held her breath for a whopping 7 minutes and 15 seconds, breaking the record Tom Cruise had set during Mission Impossible. The crazy thing about this one is that Kate literally learned to do this in 3 weeks. This was really the biggest reason she took the role in the first place too, just to get some free underwater training. For Sigourney Weaver, this was a challenge, but a challenge she welcomed. I want to become the teenager that I used to be and see where she and Carrie meet. She did a lot to prepare for this role, including jumping in on a few classes filled with teenagers. That may not have been a good thing at times, but she all in all found it a very enjoyable experience. There was just a lightness in her, in her being. You know why Steven has to do so much to get into character? He's the set's nicest guy. His co-stars attest to him being the exact opposite of his character and just can't fathom how quickly he can switch on and off. Slang is the nicest person you'll ever meet unless he's in character. James Cameron sort of had a laid-back experience with the whole thing, only having to focus on his actors' performances, the camera as well. But a lot of the times the camera moves were done digitally, or he'd just put full trust in his cinematographers. The long-awaited reunion of James Cameron and Kate Winslet may not have happened for this movie, had it not been for a strange Hollywood occurrence. I just was blown away. Kate has always been quite busy in her career. Ever since her big role in Cameron's Titanic, it almost seemed impossible for her to star in any Avatar movie. All it took was Cameron mentioning her being underwater for most of the film, that she agreed to take on the challenge. He said, hey, we, got, we have to get you in and we have to get you big and blue, and I said, I'd love that. Oh, and by the way, you know this is the only time she's ever worked with the same director twice? Pretty strange Hollywood occurrence, for sure. Okay, ready, and action! If you're listening to this on your phone, you might want to hide it before James Cameron sees. Bad things happen to those on their phone. But if you are brave enough, we're looking at all the coolest secrets from the making of Avatar. Number one, did you realize Sigourney Weaver didn't just play a younger character in The Way of Water? It's true, she already technically was playing a younger character in the first movie. Perhaps you never noticed this little detail, but her Avatar had been around for 18 years, so it looks 18 years younger than Sigourney or even her human character, Grace. Grace? Well, who'd you expect, numbnuts? 
creating her avatar was the toughest because her features did not translate well to the avatar design. And so the artist tasked with making her design brought in pictures of her from the movie Alien. Number two, let's start at the end. The end that never was, that is. The original ending of Avatar was going to see a pregnant Neytiri. We're kind of glad they didn't end it the cliche way, not gonna lie. The movie was already leaning on a ton of them, ones that had already gone out of style in the 90s, so it's for the best. The forest will heal, so will the hearts of the people. Number three, he's coming. Supposedly, if your cell phone went off, James Cameron would nail gun them to a wall. He did that with like 20 apparently, right above the exit sign. Let that be a reminder to everyone to turn it off in theaters when The Way of Water comes out. Number four, where do you even begin when forming a language? Our guess is the little words like the. Where's we right there? An entire language was created for the Navi from scratch by linguist Dr. Paul R. Frummer. What were we going to establish, and then how was everyone else going to meet that criterion? He was hired to develop a language that would be easy for actors to pronounce that didn't resemble any existing language. He created about 1,000 words. Zoe Saldana was in charge of creating the accent for the Navi in English, since she had to speak it the most. Sam Worthington said it was easier for him, an Australian, to master the Navi language than the American accent. These guys were just going off. Okay. Number five, a wide range of training was necessary to get the actors militarized and then acclimated to nature. Sam Worthington, who plays Jake, actually had to do military boot camp to bring him closer to his character. He had to learn to use multiple different weapons. So someone came down and showed him what it's like to hold a gun and all the other things that would be associated with being a Marine. While Zoe had to move completely unhuman-like, right down to working with her bow, with her elbow bent backwards. So we wanted them to have more of a animal kind of a movement. Number six, where did Jurassic Park rip off all its dino noises from? The real thing? But there is a banshee language. It makes all kinds of different sounds, and those sounds mean different things. Most of the sounds the animals make on Pandora are recycled noises from the Jurassic Park franchise. <laughs> while the yipping and cackling sounds made by the viper wolves were real spotted hyena calls. <laughs> Number seven, they could have bummed a smoke off of literally anybody. Why rely on tech? Just like almost everything else in this movie, Grace Augustine's cigarette is CGI. Honestly, we didn't see that one coming. Number eight, not that kind of cast. Jake's atrophied legs were prosthetics cast from the legs of a paraplegic man with roughly the same bone structure as Sam. Sam Worthington's real legs were tucked into the wheelchair and digitally removed in post-production. Number nine, we feel the Navi should also have six limbs. All the Pandora animals have six limbs. It wasn't that simple to just add two extra legs to an earth horse though. They had to reimagine the anatomy of the characters too. They all moved like ants. Their front four legs moved together, but the back two were separate. The multiple breathing orifices were inspired by air intakes on the sides of sports cars. We guess you can get your inspiration from anywhere. What's the metaphor? What are we trying to say to the audience with every bone and sinew that we put into this creature? Number 10, make them different, but not so different that they aren't sexy. James Cameron took inspiration for the Navi from his mother who had a dream about a tall blue woman. He drew a picture of it way back in high school, too. In designing Natiri, one of the challenges was making her look alien, but also human enough that Jake's attraction to her isn't super off-putting. They went through a ton of designs. I wanted people to say, I want to be one of them. Number 11. How many movies can you think of really pushed advancements as much as Avatar? None. Avatar paved the way for tech in movies like we know it today. The Navi actors had cameras attached to helmets to capture intimate facial performances. They were able to see simple renderings of the CGI world while filming. The actual facial capture is too complex to map onto these characters. This movie was also the first to film using a 3D camera. Number 12. When writers write, often they include a character with a personality similar to their own. For James Cameron, that was Dr. Grace Augustine. Sigourney said, I teased him because to me, I'm playing Jim Cameron in the movie as this kind of brilliant, approach-driven, idealistic perfectionist. But that same somebody has a great heart underneath. So I have to say, I was always kind of channeling him. Number 13, do you think the world was ready to handle something new? How do you 
create music for a world that doesn't exist. The music in Avatar was a new invention, meant to not be linked in any way to any culture. Homer noted, I couldn't go off into some weird world and present a whole new scale system or a whole new theme system. I had to try to glue everything together. No matter how dense it is on the screen or how alien it might be, there is a thread in the music that keeps it grounded for the audience so they know what is going on and how to feel. Number 14. One day, Sam Worthington will release a book about his experience. Sam was living in his car at the time of his audition. The person who called him in for the audition told him nothing about the director or the script. He was disappointed at first, thinking it was another waste of time. Matt Damon and Jake Gyllenhaal were actually the studio's first choices to play Jake, but James Cameron wanted to cast the relatively unknown Sam. I just wanted to say thank you, yeah, thank you. Number 15. Avatar is pretty ancient at this point. James Cameron promised not to take his pay as director if Avatar flopped. This was just one reassurance 20th Century Fox had that they wouldn't lose all their money. He originally planned to have the film completed for release in 1999, but the technology was just not advanced enough to tackle the project in a way that was financially reasonable. While a lot of people say Avatar is just Disney's Pocahontas, that isn't the full story. James had been developing Avatar since as far back as the 60s. He smushed four of his scripts together and even some early concept art from high school. The first script, being Xenogenesis, about scientists who try to find a new planet to live on. The second, Chrysalis, was about a man in a wheelchair who has all of his sensory inputs removed so he can journey through his own mind. The third, Mother, was about a company who sets up mines on other planets. The rest of the elements of the story went to his movie Alien. And the last one, Wind Warriors, was basically the plot of Avatar except set on Earth. In order to develop a fully realized world, it's easy to see why you need a team of highly skilled and super knowledgeable people to develop single aspects. Imagine trying to come up with the language, music, culture, creatures, and technology to capture it all yourself. It's an impossible task, unless you've got your master's degree in literally everything. What we're replacing is five hours in the makeup chair, having rubber glued all over your face. Avatar was visually stunning 10 years ago, and it's still visually stunning today. That's all thanks to everyone's willingness to look absolutely ridiculous on set. Number one, let's take a dip in the water for a second. For the Avatar sequel, Kate Winslet had to learn to hold her breath underwater. While we thought it was impossible to hold your breath for more than a couple of minutes, we can guarantee that her record took our breath away. She got up to a whopping seven minutes and 14 seconds. I know, I'm very proud of that, actually. They couldn't use scuba gear underwater, so it was just easier for her to learn to completely obliterate her lungs, we guess. It's not something I could just jump in the bath and do right now. Number two, so help us, there better be lots of banshees in Avatar 2. They were the coolest part of the original. Sadly, they weren't exactly cool without all the CGI and special effects. Honestly, whatever it is Sam Worthington is riding on, it's not an alien bird. It looks more like a baby toy, or maybe a knockoff mechanical bull. James Cameron's biggest question when it came to the banshee was, what is the metaphor we're trying to get across? People have asked me, what was your inspiration? What was the trigger? They're looking for some kind of proximal cause. He wanted the Banshee to be birds of prey. Eagles. Alien eagles. Number three, water. A necessary life force and also a huge pain. The tracking dot technology sure has come a long way since the first Avatar. However, they did run into a problem with the tech when they found themselves in a new environment. The CGI tracking dots would reflect off of the water. This was one of the many challenges the new environment had on technology that was no big deal in the jungle. Number four, the stunt actors would have had their work cut out for them. The nice thing about hiring stunt actors for a CGI film is you don't need to worry about matching doubles so much. Look at the special skills these actors had at their disposal. Vine swinging? Come on, what? Ruben Langdon? Hits the ground harder than anybody I know. And for the sequel, Sigourney Weaver revealed that all of the actors had to learn parkour. Number five, they couldn't just find some basketball players to play the Navi. Notice that the humans aren't present in the filming of this scene. It makes perfect sense. You can't have giant actors and tiny actors at the same time. You'd have to film them separately and then splice them together. One way to nail the scene was with pool noodles. 
Okay, it's probably not pool noodles, but it looks like pool noodles. Eh, whatever floats your goat, right? Number six. We bet this jungle beast is just a putty tat on the inside. It's all about the muscles. When creating the lifelike, otherworldly CGI creatures like the Thanator, you've got to work from the inside out. If you miss a layer, it can be spotted in your work. They built the skeleton for the Thanator and attached muscles to it over top. A black, armored, six-legged panther from hell. This is the description the alien jungle cat had 10 years before its design came to be. It didn't change much from James Cameron's original vision. Number seven, good things come in six. A similar process to what they went through with the Thanator, they also did with the dire horses. They had to completely re-engineer a horse's anatomy in order to make the hexapetal design work. To capture that much nuance in the performance of the animal can come from only one place, studying the real thing. Yes, that's right, they actually brought in real horses for the actors to ride. Number eight, we take these groundbreaking technologies for granted these days. The look of the Navi was not impressing people enough, so they went to Weta to build a new face and muscle skin system. Because characters are mostly naked, they had their work cut out for them to make sure it actually looks authentic. You can't hide behind cloth. It's got my personality, it's got my soul. To make the skin look real, animators had to work inside out, creating bone structures and muscles. Number nine, honestly, we wouldn't mind a nice cryo sleep right now. The cryo chambers are probably the closest thing to a set Avatar ever got. Aside from a touch of green screen, it's all real. Anything that can look technical and sci-fi was probably done more practical than the alien counterparts. Anything like the beautiful Pandora backdrops or nature most likely are nearly entirely, if not entirely, CGI. A range of different vehicles was used for aircrafts. We say vehicles lightly, by the way. They were metal shells with different capabilities. Some were strapped to wire and carried around, and some were just big metal cages. Number 10. Avatar really set the bar for intricate lighting. Spherical harmonics is a data representation of how light interacts with surfaces. This technology was first developed for the first Avatar movie and won Weta an award. It's necessary for creating realistic hair and eyes. Number 11. This is the strangest stampede we've ever seen. It's incredible the depth these actors are able to bring without having much to work with. Even trees are just metal racks, and creatures a human stampede with baseballs on metal rods. It was heard you. Number 12. Usually, imagination is left up to stage or voice actors, but not for Avatar. They created a teeny tiny obstacle course for Sam Worthington to run through. And honestly, we're shook. So much of the world was shot in this high-tech, cold environment. We're not sure whether to be disappointed or impressed. Although, film has shifted away from digital effects recently, as audiences favor the practical these days. But we bet the pendulum will swing back after Avatar 2. Number 13, the doctor has arrived. The Navi hand is just a blue glove. It looks like a surgical glove. Less than two dozen people were suited up here, despite there being hundreds of other Navi added later. We can only wonder how they were included. Number 14, actors can do a lot, but not everything. They're swapped out for their stunt doubles for a moment. See it? The moment Neytiri throws Sute off Jake? Is this true? Number 15. None of the stunts were CGI, folks. Okay, they were CGI, but that doesn't mean the actors and stunt people didn't still have to follow through with them. Honestly, we're quite impressed with this. It's really gonna hurt in the morning. Number 16. Jake and the Giant Beanstalk. Of all the things that were more on the practical side, this was not one of the ones we would have expected to be built. And yes, they did call it the Beanstalk. Number 17. All of the clothing was hand-stitched and yet got no awards. Moat's ceremonial gown was made in multiple different fabrics until they managed to get exactly the right weight that would move the way they wanted it to move. Sute's battle fringes were made up of different weights and fabrics. They did wind tunnel tests on fabric, and then after that, it was Weta's job to figure out how to incorporate that into the animation. Number 18. Realize, realize, real lies. And of course, the thing we were afraid of is what people have sometimes called the dead eye effect. Mounting cameras directly to actors' heads is how they solved this issue. 
with a tight-fitting carbon fiber helmet that was molded to their heads to capture every minute detail. Number 19. Avatar is the reason single-camera TV shows exist. They were using them all. We said, well, we have a fully virtual world. Let's shoot it in a, in a fully virtual way. They had two completely different camera systems. Taking it from a point where you had to wait months to see something, where he's getting it in real time. One was a virtual camera system to capture actors in a virtual environment. Jim can frame his virtual camera up and see his character there on the fly. The other was to shoot live action actors and sets in 3D. There's nowhere to hide, so every take you have to be truthful. Number 20. They went into the forest half naked for research. Taking the actors into nature really informed their performance upon returning to the mocap filming space. The actors found they retained the experience. The memories of the little things, like how it feels for your foot to step in mud. James Cameron found inspiration for many visuals by sending the actors out there too. But I think the biggest part of it that was valuable was just the kind of kinesthetic sense memory. Number 21. On top of fight training, learning a new language, etc., etc., the actors also needed to learn choreography. All of the movement was specially choreographed. But sadly, many dance numbers were actually cut out of the film. Without the choreographer, the Navi would have been missing an entire integral part of their characteristics as a community. Number 22. James Cameron grew tired waiting for the tech to catch up, so the Avatar crew invented it themselves. Jim wrote Avatar way back in 1994. It was meant to be made right after Titanic, but the technology just wasn't there yet. So the script got put off until it could catch up in order to honor Jim's vision. They got caught up in 2005 when they asked Fox for the time and money to research the technology. Could we really do the things we think we can do? Number 23. Before Avatar, there was... Avatar. Before they ever had their actors cast, they cast two temporary actors to create a 37-second clip. Why safe? Yes. Why safe? Just creating this prototype would have cost a fortune. Number 24. Cats were a huge part of the Navi design. I feel like I'm blue and I'm nine feet tall, and I'm as sexy as hell. Arriving at the design of the Navi was no easy task. Jim always knew he wanted them to be blue. But the animal features like the cat ears, tail, and nose, as well as lemur-like eyes, came organically along the way. At first, they were designed to look amphibious. And then, more alien with antennae and such, they kept coming back to blue-skinned humans, and that wasn't working either. But the big problem was, Jim didn't feel he could tell a love story if the characters weren't beautiful. I wanted people to say, I want to be one of them. They put the actors in these sphere shapes and photographed them from every angle with different lighting patterns to study the actor's facial features and design characters based on that. Number 25. Do you think they let the actor see what was up on screen to give them a sense of the magic? The stunning bioluminescent tree is nothing more than a few threads on a metal pole, but you probably figured that out by now. But what they could see behind their specialized camera was already nearly good enough for a video game. Maybe not for theaters, but for a video game. While the wood sprite was puppeted on a stick. Buckle up, fellow adventurers. We're heading back to Pandora. That's right. The wait for Avatar 2 The Way of Water has finally come to an end. And to say it lightly, it's going to be well worth the wait. There's so many secrets surrounding the making of this massive blockbuster. So hold your breath. We're diving deep into it. Number 1. James Cameron was determined in making a splash return to the cinemas. So much so, that he was having his cast take dunks in a giant pool for days on end. His realistic approach to shooting in the specific environment led designers to construct a massive 900,000 gallon water tank for the actors to basically live in. James would sit and direct his actors from above, and Kate Winslet would simply hold her breath till the take was done. We quite literally mean that, but we'll get more into that a little later. For now, let's just stay a little jealous over the paid pool days the cast got during principal photography. Number 2. Now you might be thinking, filming in a giant water tank is cool and all, but how'd they do the incredible motion capture work down there? Well, the answer is simple. James Cameron and a whole lot of money and time. We're already aware of this creativity and dedication to every film project, but he literally developed new motion capture technology to use in the water. All it took was a little brain power and a ton of ping pong balls. This tech allowed visual effects editors to more realistically depict the way water interacts with the characters' bodies, but sometimes the process became a little painstaking. According to Cameron, 
scuba bubbles would create too much noise in our performance capture system. So no matter how long the scene took, if it took two, three, four minutes to shoot, everybody was holding their breath. Number three, so if you've held your breath up until this point, congrats. That's much longer than we ever could, but you're not much of a record breaker, considering Kate Winslet holds the breath holding title for a whopping 7 minutes and 30 seconds. She was very proud of her accomplishment, and having trained for months with Navy SEALs on the technique, it looks like she got the hang of it. I learned how to breath hold and held my breath for 7 yeah. minutes, which is completely true, and I'm very proud of that. Tom Cruise may need to take a few pointers from her, and a few from Sigourney Weaver too. That's right, at 72 years of age, Weaver was able to hold her breath for just over 6 minutes. Both of these actresses really deserve a breather after the film's finished shooting. Number 4. The Titanic film mastermind decided to ditch the old ship tech and bring on a couple new ones. And being that this is Cameron's film, they had to create them both on a massive scale. With the sneak peek at the Matador and Picador, we can surmise that they are just cooler versions of submarines and boats. Number 5. Dipping a camera underwater, or any other electronic, is probably not the best idea. And with that in mind, cinematographer and camera inventor Powell Actel needed to whip up a camera to do the job right. Actel just decided to upgrade his camera to shoot 6K footage, at a distance of 20 feet. This way, filmmakers can get the quality they want, without risk of damage to the equipment. Number 6. Acting underwater is difficult enough, but can you imagine dancing underwater? Yeah, we couldn't, and it looked like the rest of the cast opted out of this venture, because James went ahead and hired trained aquatic dancers to perform the underwater numbers. Number 7. The cast and crew of the Avatar franchise really grew close and became attached to the characters, specifically for Zoe Saldana, who played the fierce Natiri of Pandora. She has become so invested in her character that she got very emotional after a special preview of Avatar 2. By just watching a mere 20 minutes of the film, Zoe cried and cheered for her character's journey. I, I was speechless. I, just, I, I was moved to tears. If this preview made her feel this way, can can you imagine how the theaters will be after watching the entire thing? A tissue box with the purchase of every movie ticket would be a big plus. Number 8. Director James Cameron has a plan, and this complex plan involves at least three more sequels. We haven't even watched the second one, however it seems he just can't wait to make them. With the comments we've heard by the actors of the movie, they seem to be all exhausted from shooting two movies at a time. I just sit here at my desk and <laughs> yes. I cry all yeah. day long. There's no solid news as to when they will be filming the others, but we can imagine it will be soon. Cameron knows the pressures of making sequels, but with the innovations he's made to make the film perfect, we can expect he knows what he's doing, as much of the hard work that is put in means more magic for the audiences, so we guess it's a win-win for both parties. Number 9. Enough about our praises for the great James Cameron, let's get the cast take on their boss. No bias, of course. You know, Jim, he's a very loyal man, and he keeps the same people on board. But all that aside, we can't imagine why they'd work with him for so long, and show so much praise for his work if they didn't like working with him. Plus, they're already at the point of nicknames in their friendship with him, which means they're basically family now. Jim trusts the people that he surrounds us with, and we all trust in him. Number 10. A successful sequel must take the best from the first, and add brand new aspects. And well, James looks to be pretty well versed in audience expectations, and won't fail to impress. Since he had such a long time to plan out the franchise, he decided to do a little research in the ocean. This made some pretty big headlines back in the day, and he really credits the success of those voyages as huge inspirations for the ocean environment of Avatar 2. Number 11. It's been over 10 years since Avatar hit the silver screens. The multi-billion dollar film united some of the finest actors of their generations. With Cameron bringing back the original cast and characters, it seems very surreal to everyone on set. Like Zoe being attached to her character, so was every one of the actors. She's my favorite. I've gotten to be able to live in her skin. They not only loved their newfound family, but they also really wanted to get going on another James Cameron spectacle. 
Number 12. We now know that the planning of the Avatar franchise started being planned as far back as 2012, but what took so long? Some can say that James's ocean excursions were to blame. As we learn more and more about the scale of the production in general, it looks like James took a decade-long hiatus to play the right moves. Number 13. Secret secrets are no fun, unless you're Sam Worthington who really thinks they're amusing. No, he's not rubbing it in our faces. He's actually keeping the secret safe for our own enjoyment. I like the surprise of it. I like that we've been very secretive for the last 15 years. And while some of the cast knows the inner workings of the story, they too just want us to enjoy a fresh new take. Number 14. The family is all united and stronger than ever. With a few hints at the upcoming plot, James had just a taste to give us. They have family bonds, they teach each other, they have taught culture. As this sequel will take place 15 years after the original, Sully has created a family and protected it for a very long time. And with the original enemies making a return invasion of Pandora, this one's going to be all about surviving as a family. Number 15. When cinema lovers think of family, who else comes to mind more than Vin Diesel? Aside from any Pandora family barbecues, Vin was announced to be in the film. Well, maybe not officially announced, but after meeting a few times with Cameron, Diesel had this to say. I have spent time with him, but I have not filmed yet. I love James Cameron and I love the series. I think it's safe to say that we will be working together. So that's what Pandora actually looks like. James Cameron's Avatar is one of the most visually stunning films ever made. But what does it look like without all the CGI? The animators have taken what the actors are doing and gone even beyond that. Natiri lives a pretty unique lifestyle as one of the Navi on the planet of Pandora. One of the things that we see Natiri partake in is drinking water from a leaf. But because director James Cameron loves to rely on technology innovation, the way that the scene was actually filmed without CGI may surprise you. Zoe Saldana was required to work with a grey plastic contraption to model as the leaf while holding a water bottle covered in duct tape to simulate water coming from the tape. We guess that's why they call it movie magic. It's the most high-tech film in terms of its execution. You may or may not have had an awkward kiss in your life, but it probably wasn't as awkward as it was for Sam Worthington and Zoe Saldana when they had to kiss as Jake and Natiri while filming Avatar. While in the movie itself, with all the added CGI, the scene plays out romantically. Without all the CGI, Worthington and Saldana had to kiss with their motion capture jumpsuits and with green dots all over their face, so that the motion capture on their characters' CGI bodies would be accurate and more real. We created a manually operated a gimbal rig that they could balance on. One of the most exciting action scenes in all of Avatar was definitely the flying banshee. Obviously, a lot of CGI was needed to be done to bring the banshee to life, as there's no living real-world counterpart to the creature. In order to capture Jake flying on the banshee, Sam Worthington was required to fly on the back of a moving plastic structure, where he'd be flung around with wires, all while wearing the motion capture suit. Honestly, we think we'd just prefer the ride at Disney World that seems a bit more comfortable. See them flying these things, they're working hard. It's always intense whenever anybody in a movie yells, but when a blue-skinned alien like Natiri yells, it's even more powerful. You will never be one of the people! Despite the goofy motion capture getup and the silly plastic Navi ears, Saldana was still able to be quite intimidating on set. Layers of additional CGI were added in order to make Natiri and the rest of the Navi look even more real in the film. You definitely wouldn't want to tick Natiri off. I at least have no idea that I'm wearing this. I feel like I'm blue and I'm nine feet tall. The big villain of Avatar was Stephen Lang's Colonel Miles Quaritch, who, unlike a lot of the other characters who required CG, is actually a human. One might assume that the Colonel's mech suit design was all CGI, but they would be wrong. The main core design of the suit was a practical effect, but it was the arm and the digital screens that were later added with additional CGI work in order to make the suit a more formidable force to the Navi. The final product proved to be quite the treat to the Navi and made Lang's Colonel an even more memorable villain. With rumors that he'll be back for the sequel, he may even bring that mech suit back. Oh yeah, who's bad? That's right. 
One of the first dangerous creatures that Jake encounters in the jungles of Pandora is the fierce Thanator. While the Thanator is quite intimidating on screen, the creature wasn't much to look at before the CGI was added. In fact, before the CGI was added, standing in for the Thanator was a red tennis ball on a long gray stick held by a crew member. In order for the actors to go on cue, the crew member holding the Thanator's stand-in would lunge at them. Life on Pandora would likely be much easier if all the Na'vi had to worry about was a tennis ball on a stick. Cameron has a knack for working with actors and actresses he's worked with before, so of course, one of the actresses he brought with him to Avatar was his alien star Sigourney Weaver. Weaver plays Grace in the film and doesn't just play the character in human form, but also as a Na'vi. While even in her Na'vi form, Grace typically wears human clothes. Behind the scenes, Weaver had to still wear a motion capture suit to convincingly play Grace's Na'vi avatar. From Alien to Ghostbusters, Sigourney Weaver has clearly made her mark in the sci-fi genre. We had horses galloping around this place. It wasn't just the human actors who were behind motion capture technology on the set of Avatar, as actual horses were used under motion capture technology for the dire horses. The horses were equipped with dots on their body, much like their human co-stars, in order for them to be transformed later with visual effects. The horses were brought to the soundstage of the film, and Cameron would film the actors behind the Na'vi riding the horses with the special technology that would allow him to be their CGI counterparts as they were filming. Who knows, maybe those horses went on to take other motion capture roles as well. Despite all the extensive CGI and motion capture present throughout Avatar, that didn't mean the actors had to perform less stunts. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Whenever we saw the Na'vi climbing up the vines of the ominous floating rocks on Pandora, Cameron had the actors behind the Na'vi climb a similar structure, all in their motion capture gear. The final CGI was added later, but still, that didn't make the climb not dangerous. Though you can't really become one of the Na'vi without at least getting a little bit rugged with yourself and your environment. Motion capture wasn't always available when capturing scenes with the Na'vi, especially when they shared the screen with the human characters. When recording the scene where Jake first wakes up in his Na'vi form, Cameron filmed the actors playing the human doctors working around an empty gurney. Behind the lens of Cameron's camera, he was able to see the CGI character. We went to Kauai, we went way up in the mountains, and we acted out the scenes. Before the motion capture work was done for Avatar, Sam Worthington and Zoe Saldana filmed without their suits, half naked in Hawaii. This would be done in order so James Cameron could know how to plan all their scenes that would need motion capture, such as the bow and arrow scene. The Tree of Voices is perhaps one of the most gorgeous looking set pieces in all of Avatar, but behind the scenes and without the CGI, that sacred tree wasn't much to look at. In fact, the trees were mainly just pieces of rope that were used to simulate the long leaves and branches of the trees that Natiri would present to Jake. The final CGI would be added into the production later. To say, these stunt guys, I mean, they really just, they gave us their all. The Na'vi clearly have a different culture than what we're used to, and Cameron wanted to display some of the tribal customs of the main tribe in the film. The group of four actors may not have had the biggest roles in the film, but that didn't mean their work wasn't difficult. These actors ultimately had to memorize a tribal dance of the Na'vi in all their motion capture suits. Now that's true commitment to the craft. If this was CG, I could have moved that in 30 seconds. So the whole time I was shooting the virtual camera, I was complaining that it wasn't live action. While there were times on set where James Cameron and his crew had more accurate models of the Dragon Assault ships, there were times where the models wouldn't be enough. In order to film the scene, Cameron had the motion capture board use a metal-like chair in the middle of the set that would be moved around by crew members. A fan was also placed in front of the actors in order to properly capture the wind blowing in their characters' faces. While the real set may not have been as exciting as actually flying on a ship as a Navi on Pandora, the cast and crew certainly made the most of it. They develop uh, the most lightweight 3D system possible, so it's a very sophisticated technology. The 3D, much like the CGI, had to be recorded in a distinct way, using two cameras. This scene where the colonel is attacked on his mech by one of the Na'vi used two cameras to perfect the 3D and the CGI. One camera would be used for the live action elements, and the other would be used for the CG 3D elements. I need you to put up $10 million to prove we can make this movie. Avatar is one of the most influential films made in the last 20 years, and the CGI is an important reason why. From Cameron's innovative ways of incorporating the CGI to the commitment for authenticity by the cast and crew, Avatar's production was clearly top-notch. 
What was your favorite CGI element in James Cameron's Avatar?